Well, my guest today needs no introduction. <laughs> he is a regular here on the podcast, and I know I love having him on, and you guys love having him on. So, Pat Hale Jr., welcome back to the podcast. You have to say something. Oh, this is it an is. audio medium. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. It, I, it is always good to be with you and your millions of, of uh, fans of Journey of Ruth. So, mm, thank you, Dad. Millions. <laughs> he waved at you guys, by the way, before he said hello. <laughs> YouTube got it. Any of our listeners on YouTube got it, but everyone else is going, why is there an awkward silence right now? Well, yeah, um, an awkward moment. Yes. yes. For anyone who doesn't know, um, this is my dad. Uh, Pat Hale Jr. And um, so we enjoy, he's a constant uh, encouragement for me mm. in whatever I'm doing, whether it's That's correct. being a mother of challenging boys or <laughs> <laughs> or just uh, something having to do with the podcast. So please tell me um, what's been going on in your life uh, since we wow. saw you in December. Wow. Well, um I am learning about the rewards of doing my job well, mm. and our company is our company has grown by at least two hundred percent over last year. And um, so, as business development guy of a concrete company, um, it's been a wonderful experience. Yes. And uh, so, I work hard, and I know it, it's. I, I feel like my job is something I don't really know much about business development just developing relationships. I just love it. I mean, it, it couldn't have been a better job. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, I had a chance over the last couple of weeks, actually yeah, two weeks to ask three people that, mm. uh, I know that if you were to die today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Wow. And one, and one of them was this morning at the grocery store. And, uh, so I said something to this, this gal who was helping me. And she said, she said, um, I said, well, you have a cheery personality. And she, you know, and she was talking about her students. And I said, well, what students? And she said, well, I teach special needs kids. Oh, cool. And and so we were talking. I said, well, a friend of mine says attitude is altitude. She said, amen. So I leaned <laughs> over and I said, so I have one question for you. I was about this close, you know, like, like uh -huh. close. And so I not said, COVID you're... close. You, you weren't. Oh, I was. I was beyond. I. <laughs> this was no six foot nothing, and uh, we actually leaned around the stupid. I mean, oh, yeah. excuse me, the plexiglass screen. And I said, "If you were to die today, no, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven?" And she said, "Yes, sir. Ha hallelujah." And so... <laughs> <laughs> and you live in the south, so I'm sure there was like a southern accent in there. Oh, buddy, she was. Yeah. She was all southern. She was all southern. <laughs> So anyway, so it's been a, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, what I happens have, when people say, when you say that to people, how do they respond to you? Well, um, out of the three that I've recently done, yeah, she's the first one that said, yep, I'll see you up yonder. And the other two uh, said, well, I, I've done good works and I'm a good person. And I said, well, just keep in mind, Jesus said, that that's one way for sure you know you're not going. Hmm. You, can't he... work your, you can't work yourself to heaven. And uh, they both looked at me, and they're, they're dear friends of mine, and they just they looked at me, and I said, but when you're ready, you tell me, and I'll be more than happy to, to help you come to know Christ. So, Do friends ever take that as you being judgmental? Or no, because of the way you say it? Uh you know your daddy. I don't really care whether they think I'm judgmental. <laughs> I'm I'm more concerned about whether they're going to go to heaven. Hmm. If they get mad for me trying to share Jesus with them, then that's not really my problem. I hmm. did it in a very gentle way. Yeah. And um, two of them I was having lunch with, and okay. I know them. And uh, I told them, I said, we've known each other a long time, and I I love our friendship, and the last thing I want you to do is not go to heaven. Mm, you know, and I, because I do know you, I do know that you approach everything with grace. So it's not like you're coming at them, you know, hellfire and brimstone and mm -hmm. like, you know, 
you know, mm-hmm. preaching at them. But, you know, I think sometimes that a, a question about whether or not um, someone's going to heaven or where they stand in their faith with Jesus, people are a little <clears throat> uh, cautious to broach those subjects because it, they're afraid that they might offend the person that they're approaching. So, so we're more concerned about, actually, that all that says to me is we're concerned about whether we're going to be rejected or not. And we don't really care whether or not they're rejected in eternity. And and I'm just going to be point blank about that's not what our topic today is. But yeah. the church has become so mamby pamby about this. Mamby pamby. They're mamby pamby. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, they're they're afraid that they're going to be offended. I I walked out of my gym this afternoon, and there was a man and a woman having what looked like through the glass of my Planet Fitness looked like they were having an argument. Mm. And and uh, so. I kind of watched, and when I was done, I, I, so I just walked over to them, and I was walking between cars, and I was coming up on her side, um, and he saw me and just kept doing it, and I said, are you two okay? She literally jumped out of her skin. I mean, she was scared to death that I yeah. would say that, and she said, well, thank you. She said, yeah, I'm leaving, mm-hmm. so... So obviously, I think there was a, an interchange going on there. And um, when she left, there was a sticker on the back that some North Carolina university and it said a mom. And I thought, well, I have to, I, I probably would have got the snot beat out of me by that guy. We just came out of the gym, right? But yeah. I, all I know is if that was, if that had been your mom or mm-hmm. if that was you, I would hope somebody would step in and not be afraid to be hurt. So mm. that's how I, I I think, you know, because the Bible says, as you see the day of the Lord drawing near, um, we need to be about telling people. Yeah. So all of your millions of viewers need to hear this. There's a lot of people dying right now who are going to die and go to hell. Are they going to be left behind? Mm-hmm. And so, um, and you can't, and again, you look at what's going on in Ukraine, you look what's going on around Israel and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of end time stuff happening and the church is just kind of closing their ear to it. Yeah. And that's a real mistake. That's why I gave you guys, all my children, Tipping Point by mm-hmm. Jimmy Evans. Yeah. Because uh, I want you guys to read it and uh, so that you have a, an idea of what how prophecy lines up. Yeah. And the, in, in times, uh, Mm -hmm. eschatology is the fancy word for it, right? Is that right? No. Uh, uh, eschatology. Yeah. I'm thinking more of a, what, what is, uh, old and new Testament prophetically say about, about, yeah, it's leading up to what the eschatology and all of that would be, but it's, it's, it's things that are, um, that are foretold. So end times being lead, what is leading up to the second coming of Christ. And that, and that we could have like a five hour conversation. Well, and, sure we could. Yeah. And there's a lot of yeah. debate on that within the church. But yeah. what I think you want us to hear what you're saying mm-hmm. is whether Christ, you know, is coming back tomorrow or Christ is coming back years from now, we need to live our lives in a way that where it's like, he's coming back in an hour. And right. it matters the conversations that I have today because Correct. I don't know what tomorrow is going to look like. Correct. Yeah. So you have people like Jonah. This is a great segue. You have prophets like Jonah yeah. who were reluctant. But then you had other prophets like Ezekiel and Isaiah and others who were not reluctant at all. Man, they just, God told them and they said it. Well, mm-hmm. Jonah was not that way. Mm-hmm. And I think what we can see in the story of Jonah is, is one, how being a reluctant Christian today is going to send a lot of people into eternal damnation. It's crazy Mm -hmm. what's gone on in the church. I remember when we first started at West Greenway, the very, I'm sorry, West Greenway, forgive me. I said that wrong. Uh, At First Baptist Church, Williams. Williams. Yeah. We almost baptized a hundred people in the first year. Wow. Yeah, wow. it just so, but that's just being bold and saying now's the time to do something about that. So, you know, with Jonah, which we're going to talk about, is is a prophet who God spoke to him, go to Nineveh, yeah, and tell them I'm going to destroy them in forty days. I mean, God no longer, no sooner puts a period after what he said, 
and Jonah's running out the door to Joppa to yeah. buy a ticket to right. go to Tarshish. And that's 350 or 3,050 miles away. Yeah. And he's running away from God instead of into what God called him. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have the story of Jonah. So the reason why dad kind of transitioned there was because that's where we're going to go um, yes. is into Jonah. Dad was telling me about <clears throat> He has been studying uh, this passage because of uh, a sermon that he's going to be preaching in a couple of weeks. And uh, what he was talking about as far as the life application of Jonah, I think sometimes we look at the Old Testament and um, some people aren't sure how we can apply that to life today. And right. it's, you know, they feel like it's a little bit easier to find that life application within the New Testament. But what he was talking about, how we can look at Jonah's life and how we can uh, apply that to our situations here in, you know, today's culture. I was like, oh, we should talk about that. So mm -hmm. we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, and, we're gonna. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I said this in the intro, but I'm going to say it again. If you have not read the book of Jonah, um, it's only four chapters. Right. Um, if you like have the Bible app on your phone, I think you can listen to the whole story in like 10 minutes. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't, you, you know, you want to push pause here on this uh, episode, on this conversation, go listen to Jonah or go read Jonah and then come back to it. It might make a little more sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think, you know, if you want to listen to this conversation and then go read Jonah and say, oh, yeah, OK, I can see how mm -hmm. that would be true. Um but we are going to talk about Jonah. And, and so the beginning of Jonah, God, it starts out with God telling Jonah, hey, I want you to go and tell these people that I'm going to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about Nineveh? Talk about the people of Nineveh mm -hmm. and why would Jonah think that he should like run in the other direction? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, you grew up going to Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Because uh, that's my hometown. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to be from. Uh, so we went all the time for holidays. Well, but not to I the speak, place where everybody goes on vacation. That that's the that's correct. Yeah. Las Vegas is known as Sin City. Uh huh. And uh, I knew it as a town like like San Antonio or. New York City or Detroit or whatever. I mean, it was just a town where I grew up in. Yeah. And um, but everybody knows Las Vegas is Sin City. That's what they say. And so there's a reputation that Sin City has. Well, mm -hmm. Nineveh was uh, well, Nineveh was a part of the uh, uh, capital. It was the capital of Assyria, and the Assyrians were a ruthless, vicious people. And what they would do is when they would conquer, and this is intriguing to me because I'm l watching what's going on in Ukraine and the brutality mm -hmm. of the of, of Putin and the Russian army. And they're just, they're targeting civilians and, and yeah. pregnant women and children. It's like, if that's not demonic, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. And I hope he listens to this podcast. <laughs> yes, Putin is one of my regular listeners. Uh huh. Yeah, and it would be nice <laughs> if your president would listen too. But um, it what why so what happened? I think uh, I, I'm I'm just guessing. I don't know the whole background of, of Jonah. Somebody he knows, maybe a family member, or maybe just the reputation those sinful Assyrians, when they capture a town, what they do is they begin to methodically uh, uh, torture and kill people. Mm -hmm. they, will, they are known for taking captives and skinning them alive. Mm. Uh, they're known for lining men, women, and children up in a long line and running a, a, a chariot behind horse with a behind a horse and there's spikes on the the uh, the wheels of the chariot and running that across the people back and forth so literally mm. it's like aerating your lawn but mm. they're they're really just destroying you know they're killing people yeah. so they were they were known as a very savage they would take children and they would they would uh, burn them they would sacrifice mm. them you know so i i think that and again, I haven't done all my research on it. I just something in the back of that prophet's mind 
uh, it was uh, because if you read the rest of the story, you get over to chapter four, he's mad at God for saving them. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler, uh, spoiler alert. He's God saves these people. Oh, that, oops. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that gives the, the story more context. When you know, you read it knowing that these people are going to turn from their wicked ways um, right. <clears throat> in like a big God-sized way. Um, and But knowing Jonah, w- what he thought he was walking into. And, and, you know, this is the the people that I look at it as when um, I can't remember his name. Uh, God told him to go and meet Paul, who was Saul at that time after. Right. Mm-hmm. And Saul had had just had his conversion. Mm-hmm. But um, do you remember his name? I don't remember his name. You're not supposed to ask your dad those I'm questions sorry. online. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> because then I have to say, you know, honey, I don't remember. Axe. I'm going to go to Axe. <laughs> It's in us. Right. Uh, and so, but anyway, God, uh, and someone's screaming it at us right now, by the way, that knows right. it. They're like, they're it's this. To... How do you not know? Yeah, um... yeah. You went to Bible college and you don't remember this. My, of course, Dr. Puckett and Dr. Martin are turning over in their grave going, we taught you that. You know this. Um, yeah, that's right. Anyway, he doesn't know that right. Saul has just had his conversion moment on the road to Damascus. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. All he knows is God says, hey, I want you to go into town and find Saul. And he's like, you yeah. want me to go and find the guy that's killing all the Christians? Exactly. And mm-hmm. and God is like, yeah, yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes those moments where we feel like God is sending us into areas that don't make sense Mm-hmm. This is where we see, I love how the Bible, the, the, the people that God puts in the Bible are just, they're just so normal, you yeah. know, and it's not- interesting. It's interesting because David Jeremiah points out that one of the things about the, uh, the, what the book of Jonah portrays is the Bible really, it, it here is talking about real issues, real mm. life. Yeah. Uh, because here was a disobedient. Uh, prophet of God, God spoke to prophets directly. And this dude is saying, I'm out of here. And I know that never happens to Christians today. No, we never say, oh, I won't, I'm not going there because they won't hear me or they won't. And you know, it's, it's when I hear stories of, um, of Christians Mm -hmm. from Afghanistan going back into Afghanistan Yeah. Mm -hmm. after what has just happened. And after the Taliban Mm -hmm. has taken over, they know, they know that they are walking into a country uh, mm-hmm. where there are people looking to kill them. But mm-hmm. what they also know is that they're walking into a country of desperate people. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to go in and they, they know that they right. are going in at, to die. But mm-hmm. they're going to save as many people as they can. Absolutely. On their way Absolutely. to mm-hmm. go see Jesus in heaven. And so mm-hmm. I, with Jonah... I think we're seeing real raw human emotions. Who mm-hmm. would not be afraid and be like, nah, if God was like, hey, I want you to go to this group of people that is one of the most evil people. Well, around. think about it in, in modern terms. A, a, a modern day example would be, what if God spoke to you and said, Courtney, you're to travel to Russia mm-hmm. and tell Putin that he needs to repent. And if he does, then... Uh, the destruction will will cease. Yeah, that's what happened to Jonah. Yeah, it's that real. Yeah, and he said, uh, "No, I'm going to Las Vegas." <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Yeah. So kind he of, heads yeah. he heads in the wrong direction. Yeah. And opposite. he does opposite direction. Yeah. yeah. Gets on a boat, and uh-huh. um, one of my favorite things is that the scriptures tell us that he reveals to the guys, "Hey, yeah. I'm running from God." Yes, right. <laughs> so can I get on your boat? And they're like, yeah, yeah sure, come yeah, on. Yeah, sure, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Thanks for helping me run from and God. Th- and then he goes down into the ship and goes and to goes sleep. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then this huge storm happens and he's still asleep and the guys have to come down and get him right. and and pull him out and because they're trying to figure out 
why is basically it seems like the sea is wants to eat us the, the sea literally wants to consume us that that's is how correct. bad this this uh storm feels that they're in mm -hmm. that's um, and so then we see that Jonah says, you know, they're like, who is it? Who is it? And Jonah's like, yeah, it's me. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm the guy. Got I'm an the arrow guy. over his head. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so then they ask him, what, what should we do? What can we do to like stop yeah. this torment? And he says, yeah, throw me in the ocean and then things will stop. Right. So mm -hmm. he's really honest and he's really straightforward about yeah. what needs to happen Right. So he gets thrown in. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Before you go to that, oh. before you go to that, they ask him, who are you? Where do, where do you come from? And he says, yes. oh, I'm a Hebrew. And it's an interesting statement yes. because he says it's in uh, chapter one, verse nine. He says, uh, uh, he said to them, I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. <laughs> The one I'm running from. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> it was like, uh, 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 I, I, and that's kind of like, forgive me, but it, it reminds me of people that say they're Christians. Mm -hmm. This has happened so many times as a pastor. People say, well, I'm a Christian. I say, great. What church do you go to? Uh, well, uh, they don't know what's church. They don't know the pastor's name. They don't know the address. And I'm not being judgmental. I'm just saying that. Here you had this prophet of God that was saying one thing and doing another. And I think it on, I think John is the only one that's ever been guilty of that. Yeah. The only one. Uh-huh. Yeah, the only one. The only one. Yeah. So. There's no other examples <laughs> yes, right. in history or in scripture <laughs> right? or yeah, no, but you're right. Yeah. He, he was mm -hmm. saying one thing, but that mm -hmm. also what he was doing did mm -hmm. not change his identity. Right. So his identity was the same, even though he was making the wrong choice. Correct. So we got to remember that. Well said. Mm -hmm. You know, and so our identity remains the same no matter what we are, what mistakes we're, we're making. And sometimes mm -hmm. we can think or, or, you know, Satan can whisper those lies to us that because you've made these choices and run the other direction, you are right. now no longer a child of God. You are no longer worthy of the sacrifice of his son. You are no longer worthy of those things. And here Jonah's like, I'm still a prophet of God. I still believe yeah. in the one and true God. And yes, right. I'm running from him. Correct. So throw me in the ocean. <laughs> Correct. So he gets thrown over. He gets thrown over and, and a big fish he, swallows him. And, and I, I love in chapter two because it's the beginning of several prepared. Oh. If you read, if you read through, okay. if you read through, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, uh -huh. you will see there's two events in Jonah's life where God prepared something for Jonah. Mm. One was the, the big fish, of course, okay. the whale. And um, I know that Dr. David Jeremiah shares about a whale uh, that was a hundred foot sulfur bottom whale. I didn't even know such thing existed. But it was, it was captured off of Cape Cod in the 1930s. Its mouth was 10 to 12 feet wide, so big it could easily have swallowed a horse. Um, these whales have four to six compartments in their stomachs. Any one of them could house a group of full-grown men. The nasal cavity of this whale contains an enormous air storage chamber as well, often, me often measuring seven feet high seven feet wide and 14 feet long. And it had a couch in there for Jonah. I'm just... <laughs> well, that's certainly what it looks like on the veggie tales version. So well, yeah, yeah. So there was a big old ball of snot and that's where Jonah oh. slept at night. I know that was bad. So Thank you. But again, uh, it talks about here that God prepared a, a big fish who came and swallowed Jonah. Mm -hmm. And, and what we get into chapter two is God allows a set of circumstances to discipline Jonah uh, because of his rebellion. Mm -hmm. And as I was reading through this, you want me to just go ahead and go into that? Um, sure. Yeah. Well, so, and one of the things that I, I guess before we get into that is what I love that you see from Jonah is he actually describes what he felt and what he went through before he got swallowed by the whale. Correct. And it, it wasn't pleasant. 
You know, he says, I couldn't breathe. I got kelp around my face. I I was being pulled down (laughs) to the deepest mountain. I mean, you know, like he describes, so he describes his experience of, of drowning basically. Right. And, um, and he is, I, I wonder if he's just like really paying attention because he knows that that this is the end of my life right here. So he's like taking in what's happening to him. And then all of a sudden a fish swallows him and he's like, Oh, I didn't die. I'm still alive. Well, now all of that that you described is while he's in the whale. Yeah. The seaweed wrapped around him. Yeah. He's described, he's describing what it's like to be in the mouth. Oh, which is cool. Yeah, really? yeah. It, okay. If you, yeah, if you read the text, just the way it says, uh, into the heart of the seas, which means he's going down uh, in the belly of Sheol. There's so much that could be said here. So I'm thinking, you know, your father. So I'm thinking, like when we fly and our ears need popped and we squeeze our nose and blow and it pops yeah. our ears. I'm thinking a whale is going, man, something is not good. So it puts its fin over its breathing hole and blows. <laughs> and that shoots Jonah back. <laughs> I don't, I, don't know. <laughs> I disagree with that. And do you know why I disagree with why? that? Why? Because it says that it vomited him that, on yeah. the beach. So yeah, where true. does vomit come from? Uh, well, uh, for me, it comes from my stomach. But uh, yeah. I, you know, okay. Well, from your stomach and out your mouth. Right. So, and I also think that that shows the really awfulness of like, Oh. being spit like if you say he was spit out of his mouth that's like okay you know okay and you're out but so vomited that means it's not yeah. just you it's all the stuff in the stomach too is this a great time to talk about the retainer story <laughs> and the bag full of vomit is that a great time to talk about this with all of your oh millions of viewers you you probably need to do <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm you can stop, no, stop. you can share the story. You got to share the story now because now they're going. No. What's going oh, on? No, no, but warning, no. warning! If you have a weak stomach, <laughs> <laughs> no. You might what we'll do is uh, <clears throat> all of your viewers out there. I will come back and I will share the retainer vomit story. Okay, you know what? Here's what we'll do. Okay, at the end we'll record it. And we'll put oh. it on YouTube for everybody. So, oh, guys, oh, if, that's you, a great idea. if you yeah. want to hear the, <laughs> the retainer story. Or you can or you can get it as a subscriber the, to, <laughs> to, to Patreon. Please join us. Patreon.com slash Journey of Ruth. Yes. yes. Uh, it will, no, I'll put it on YouTube. And okay. um, and it's a it's a it's my orthodontist told me that I won the grossest retainer story of all time. And I want you to know that was one of my great father merit badges. <laughs> it really was. It really, it was. really was. So, um, okay. uh, the fish is vomiting yes. Jonah up on on the shore. But right. you were going to say something, you know, as well, far I, as I preparing. Wanted to, yeah, I wanted to talk about as I was reading because I'm I'm supposed to preach on chapter two, mm-hmm. and as I was reading it it began to dawn on me. I've always looked at it as a rebellious <clears throat> prophet and uh, uh, God sends the whale to discipline him. And it's while he's in the belly of a whale or wherever in the whale, big, big fish is yeah. how I call it. Um, it is there that he comes to his senses. Mm. He, 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 he comes to his senses and he begins to confess who God really is to him. Now, he doesn't say, God, forgive me for going uh, to Joppa. He doesn't do that. He's humbled. And and there's a change of his heart. And at the very last part of uh, chapter two, it says, I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So when his heart changed, because his heart, the heart of God was not his reality when God spoke to him. Jonah was about Jonah. Jonah Mm -hmm. was not about the heart of God. And God, if you read the rest of the story, said, why would I not say Nineveh with 120,000 people, you know, who repented? So there's a great story here about the fact that, you know, sometimes we can be disobedient and God will allow circumstances. Okay. But as I'm reading this, I'm thinking this not only applies to a 
rebellious prophet, it, it, it applies to all of us in the fact that sometimes we have circumstances that, that come our way and we feel like we're in the belly of a whale. Yeah. We, we feel like we're in this depth. You know, I've talked to enough people over the years about depression or suicide or whatever, or, you know, they go from, they go from, you know, financial problems, get job loss, you know, marriage falls apart. They just have one right after the other. Mm -hmm. But what I saw in this, to be honest with everybody, is as I was reading this, I began to think about our recent big fish. And that Mm. was the losing of your mom. Yeah. And the challenge that that was for all of us. And Mm. we learned a great deal uh, about life. One, uh, we learned that that death uh, in marriage is a part of the marriage process. When you make a vow, yeah. it's unto death. And so many people, including Christians, never get there. They don't, they don't really realize what a blessing it is to hold your beloved all the way to the last breath. They don't, they don't get that. Mm. But I can tell you now, having gone through that, I'm really not afraid to die. I'm, um, I'm not afraid to marry again. I'm not afraid. There's a whole lot of things that going through that event, uh, all that did was galvanize, not boivinize, but galvanize mm-hmm. uh, um, who, who are, are my faith in the Lord. But, but here's a couple of things, Courtney, I just want to throw out. And again, uh, your listeners can find this in the second chapter. Um, in, uh, uh, um, in the verse 17, 117 is where this section starts, mm-hmm. and then it reads on into the two. But it shows that when we're in a belly of the whale, when we're in a big fish moment, and I'm, I'm hoping that your listeners are listening to this, they, I don't know what their challenges are, financial, cancer, uh, job, uh, they're scared to death of what's going on in the world, yeah. or they have a child in the military. I mean, there's just all kinds of the stuff going on in our world. When you're in a big fish, we need to remember that God has prepared. He's prepared us. He's prepared his grace and his mercy to carry us through that, that big fish belly. Mm. And then, and then it goes on to talk about the fact that Jonah begins to cry out. And the next thing is God listens. As Mm. we cry out in our big fish, we need to remember that God listens. Yeah. And then the th- second one is, is in Jonah's case, God disciplines in, in, in this situation. He disciplines uh, Jonah's rebellion. But not all big fish events are because of rebellion. It's just mm. life. Yeah. And what we need to remember is in this situation, we're not be- our circumstance is not we're being disciplined. God is growing us. He's building our character. He's, he's preparing our faith enough. If, if we're at a place where our faith has grown and it's time to go to the next level, there may be a big fish event before that that we have to go through, which prepares us for that next level of whatever it is that God has. Yeah. And, you know, um, as I was reading this, I was thinking about, wow, all the way through our big fish moment season, um, God was right there with us. And, yeah. and, and we, we learned, we, we saw God working, making adjustments yeah. and a move. And we saw all of that. Well, if we can remember that as Christians, it makes big fish moments a little bit easier mm. to, to handle whether we're being disciplined or God is growing us. If we know that he goes into that big fish with us. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's a big fish moment, but we've got a bigger God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, and I think as you read this, you see that it, it says to me that obviously Jonah got to see a side of his God that he had never seen before. Yeah. And is that not what happens in circumstances? If we don't, if we don't let the circumstances ruin us, they can actually grow us. Well, and I and, think when you're in a moment, a big fish moment, mm-hmm. it is it is scriptural. 
uh, backed up by scripture. And then it's probably also, you know, you'll hear story after story of how God meets you in that big fish moment in a way that he's never met you before and probably couldn't meet you because your heart wasn't uh, as ready to receive him in that way. And Jonah, Mm -hmm. who, who already served this God, met God in a whole other way because of just how, <clears throat> you know, when you're in a big fish moment, you're vulnerable. That's correct. You are because you're, you're raw. Your emotions are raw. You're scared. You're uncertain. Um, you're not as, if you're a really confident person, right. maybe for the first time in your life, you've lost all confidence. And so right. God can meet you. You said earlier, Jonah was humbled. He mm-hmm. meets you in your humble, you know, your humbled state. Mm-hmm. And you learn more about who he is and he shows you more about who you are. And so then they become together. You grow, um, in your relationship with Christ and Mm -hmm. you grow as a human, just like, is it in James, you know, talking about, um, any of our, our, um, our struggles, our trials and tribulations. Tribulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they grow character. And what is the point of them? Uh, That is how we become the perfect version of ourself. Correct. And it uses the word perfect. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want on my tombstone, right? Is that she became the perfect version of herself. But what James says is the only way to get there is through trials and tribulations. These big fish moments. And and I think in our Western Christianity, um, you know, those of us in America and other places, we think or somehow assume maybe it's bad preaching, bad theology, bad Sunday school teacher. I I, I don't know that when you become a Christian, everything is comfortable. There's no problems. Yeah. And that is just not true. Life, life. I can't say what I'm thinking, but life is tough. It's, it can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. And the, what we find though, the older we get, you know, I'm as old as dirt. So when you get to a certain age, you look back and you realize that, wow, I grew during that season. I think about when we were in Williams, that was a growing season for your mama and I, Mm -hmm. the the time when we were at West Greenway. And then in Texas, when we were apart for 18 months, I had a new job and you were on on mission in France and Dylan was in high school, finishing up his senior year. Those were trial moments that Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't trade for anything um, because the outcome. So God uh, got what God did for Jonah. He prepared a big fish. Mm -hmm. God prepares for us these circumstances. That's what I saw in this chapter. Yeah. Is we don't have to be rebellious. The problem is, is if we're not rebellious and we get a big fish, we don't understand why. Mm -hmm. And I think that that we just have got to get that out of our thinking. Well, scripture says, why are you surprised when struggles come? Mm -hmm. That's legit. That's the scripture. Why are you surprised when struggles come? And so wherever Mm -hmm. that belief that if you become a Christian, then everything will be fine. I mean, I've heard Mm -hmm. that before and I'm like, I don't know where Mm -hmm. that came from. That came mm-hmm. from someone who was like trying to con people into Christianity. Or <laughs> like, it's not true. Um, yeah. I actually asked on um, Instagram, I asked people to submit questions if they had oh. any questions about Jonah. And one of them fits in right per- perfectly right here when we're talking about our big fish moments. Can you give advice for persevering and finding joy in the struggles? Wow. Hang in there, baby. <laughs> um, oh boy, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that, is that not what you were looking for? <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna, you know, your mom and I had several. You know, we were married 39 years, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> you know, we were. She, uh, the the year that we were engaged, she was traveling with a music group. Yeah. So our struggle began from the very beginning of our marriage. Struggle meaning. God was growing us and it just always seemed like God just would take us to the next level and the next level and the next. And it always seemed like it was those, those big fish moments. And I look back on them now and they weren't big, but boy, they were sure big then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, You know, so um, 
So can I give advice? Yeah, my advice would be, remember, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Mm. Um, the, to, to persevere, to continue to get up every day. There was a, when, uh, when uh, um, mama got sick, um, I remember thinking, oh Lord, how, 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 do, how do I even get up tomorrow and do what I need to do? And how do we do this? And he said, how did Noah build the ark? one board at a time mm. it took yeah. him 120 years right. <laughs> and if anybody if they don't know about the life-size uh ark in yeah. kentucky uh -huh. they need to go yeah. um but that's how noah and his family built the ark mm -hmm. and and because god said by the way i'm going to destroy the earth god said that there's going in scripture there are going to be prepared big fish moments that are going to come our way to grow us and to challenge us and to push us forward. Yeah. Um, so my advice would be <clears throat> is you don't quit. Mm -hmm. The Bible also says, don't grow weary in doing good. And you just, it's one day, one foot at a time, what regardless of what your big fish is. And <clears throat> if we want to start naming them, I've got quite a list <laughs> yeah. and I can say in every one of those, um, the, the, the difference was we leaned into Jesus. We held on to each other. We loved our babies and we just served every day, one day at a time. Yeah. What I hear you saying is that you didn't, <clears throat> you guys worked together and you mm -hmm. had community that you brought in with mm -hmm. you in those big fish moments. Very I good. know that the story of Jonah, we see he's by himself. Yeah. Right. So um, he was really, truly doing this alone. Um, mm -hmm. But community can really help us to um, continue to find that joy and mm -hmm. the strength to persevere. Because sometimes that's the other thing you're like, I know I'm supposed to persevere, but I'm literally out of strength. And yeah. that's when you turn to your um, you know, your the the body of Christ, and say, I, yeah. I I can't do this anymore. Can you help me a little bit? Well, when when Mama got sick, and we we knew that she was not going to survive, we just didn't know how long, and she lived a lot longer than anybody said she would. If it hadn't been for uh, our Christian family and our own families, the Baldwins, the Hales, the Crafts, and if I start naming somebody, I'm going to forget somebody, and I'm going to get slapped. But if all of them had not put a net of care around us, um, we we I don't know how we would have survived. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so I, I I just applaud your your value of the bride of Christ and family and friends. Look at mm -hmm. how much you and Sarah yeah. have supported each other, and having both of you lost your mama, yeah, and how you supported each other through that. And um, nobody wants to be an expert <laughs> about losing someone. Nobody, I, I don't think Jonah really understood that the big fish was prepared by God. One, maybe to protect him from himself, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but then to discipline him for his behavior. And then he was puked up, now that you brought that up, he was puked up on the beach. He immediately went into Nineveh. He pronounced God's judgment and the king of Nineveh and everybody, they just fasted. They sackcloths and ashes. And, and they even said the animals can only eat and drink so many times yeah. a day. I mean, mm -hmm. it was everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I, it says that it was a three day walk, mm -hmm. um, you know, across Nineveh and he went in one day's walk. And so mm -hmm. I wonder why that's in scripture because, you know, nothing is is like there. Why is it that he only walked in one day? That's not you know, that's not the city center. So, well, maybe part of it is if you just spent three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, you would run, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you could get is one day. Yeah. You're like, OK, this is it. <laughs> that's just, right. I'm out of here. <laughs> right. I'm not going to get too far in because then I have to like. I have to get out before people kill me. I don't know. Yes, um, right. <laughs> but he preaches and, and, and it's the people that 
accept his message first right. and then it gets to the king and he hears about it and he's like yeah we're all going to turn from our wicked ways and um yeah we're going to um fast and wear sackcloth and so they mm -hmm. made that that change in as a as a nation um right. but i before we before we go on to I would, I do want to talk about that last portion of Jonah. Uh, before we get there though, I want to go back to that joy moment. How do we find joy in that? One of the things that you and Mom did is something that uh, even non Christian um, uh, counselors have found to be helpful, and that is um, to make sure that you are having a moment of gratitude every day. Yeah. And um, they have found in clinical studies that listing the things that you're thankful for on a daily yeah. basis actually has a positive effect on um, depression and anxiety. I'm not saying it's going to cure it, but they have just in um, when you're talking about receiving treatment for mm -hmm. depression, one mm -hmm. piece of that that many counselors will suggest is keeping a gratitude journal and Absolutely. and listing the things that you're thankful mm -hmm. for. And you guys actually awesome. made a list of yep. things that you were thankful for and the ways that you were seeing God move in really big mm -hmm. ways. And then you would read it at night yeah, I, before mm -hmm. you went to bed every night. And that yeah. list got real long. I mean, it, it like... Yeah. It took like I 10 would or say 15. to your mom, honey, it's late. Are you really sure you want to read this whole list? And she would say, yep, every yep. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you tell your wife, right? And so well, and after she, her second surgery, mom had no tact. So it was like, no, she like did. <laughs> there was no, there was no yes. There was no, well, maybe just, it was yes. Yep. And you're oh, like, yeah. oh, and, okay. And I would, I would sit up in bed with the laptop in my lap and I would start reading it and I would start to dawn totally off and I would. <laughs> and you know me, you yeah. know, what at nine o'clock I turn into a pumpkin, right? Yep. But bless her heart, that, that list for her was one of the greatest hopes. It was mm. wonderful things that she could hang on to yeah. while we were, because she knew she wasn't going to get out of that big fish. She, right. she knew she wasn't going to survive that big fish, except she was then going to step beyond that to eternity with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And um, I can only imagine the piano she's playing in heaven. But uh, we would yeah. go through that list every night. And I mean, we, and it started and it was amazing because we would, it, it uh, things like driving down the freeway on the, on our move to North Carolina and one tire in the U-Haul blows, just blows yeah. up. Doesn't take the other one out. It's full of all of our stuff. I'm driving this big old monstrosity, monstrosity, mm -hmm. and I was able to pull it over. And it just, uh, you know, things like Rusty Burroughs saying, uh, "How can I help?" Well, we need somebody to drive our other car. Just, I can't, I'm your man. I mean, it just. And he flies list, out to drive with you guys. Yeah. He does. He did give me one heck of a bill, but um, <laughs> no, just. So all I'm saying is. You're right. The joy in that, it gave not only Janet great joy, but the hope mm -hmm. because it reminded her and I and those like you guys are, that were around us that God is at work even in the midst of this big fish. And that's where when I was reading chapter two, it clicked. I went, mm. ah, God was, <laughs> he was in the midst of that big fish with us. He yeah. didn't leave us alone. And yeah. we live in a fallen world. People get cancer. And uh, she, said, she said, well, if I'd known I was going to get cancer, I wouldn't have drank Diet Cokes. I said, honey, we don't know that. You. <laughs> she which said, I so, know, I know. but <laughs> Which is so um, funny because she was always so careful about what she ate. Yeah, and, she I really mean, was. Yes, there was a time in her life where she didn't, but that was before right. we all really knew and we thought Diet that's Coke correct. was good for us. And yeah. yeah, right. Or that's what they told us. Uh, yeah, well, you, you know? drink a Diet Coke and have a chocolate eclair. They balance each other out <laughs> yeah something like yeah. that uh, but yeah. again that my counsel would be when you when you're going one of the best things we can do is to recognize we're in a big fish mm -hmm. you need to recognize that we're in the midst of something something's going on here and i'm one that often doesn't 
figure that out quick enough. Yeah. And then I, and you know me well enough to know, I, I, I don't really like conflict and trouble and challenges. Uh, I prefer smooth, smooth sailing, but I get about two thirds into it and I go, oh, mm-hmm. we're in a big fish. I didn't call it that, but I will now moving forward. Absolutely. I can see where God used this to get Jonah's attention. And sometimes mm-hmm. God has to use big fish things, whether it's discipline or direction or peace or um, whatever yeah. uh, to get our attention because we're so busy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the busy schedule is definitely one that can get in the way. And it can be hard if we're in the middle of a big fish moment, we right. may be filling mm-hmm. our schedule to like distract yeah. us from the big fish moment or like, if it's a cancer diagnosis, your schedule is full. You yeah. know, like you didn't want it that way and you didn't make it that way, but you have 75 appointments every week and you almost don't even have time to process or grieve or any no. of those things because you, you're just living day to day. And that's um, and that's why I love the idea of a gratitude journal or something yep. like that um, because it does allow us to keep that, um, that joy as a perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's something, you know, if you are a couple going through, it's a moment for the two of you to sit together and, and keep that in mind. And, and you, you begin to see even the small things that God Mm -hmm. is doing, um, instead of only seeing, you know, obviously everyone's like, Oh, look at this big way that God showed up, but let's, let's concentrate on that one small way that God Mm -hmm. showed up at three o'clock this afternoon that I didn't expect him to, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. and so, I, I took us away from the end of, of Jonah's story, but I want to go back there. And okay. he does go in and they do receive that story. And you think, okay, that's the end. No. But it's not <laughs> because no. Jonah is not perfect. And Jonah is a normal person who is right. a prophet of God. And yeah. he leaves the city finds himself a high place outside of the city and because he's going to sit there and he's going to watch God destroy the city Mm -hmm. and God doesn't instead God works on Jonah and his heart and shows us his and God shows us his own heart as well um can you talk a little bit about Jonah's sitting up there, you know, he's sitting and the story goes that he's sitting there and then he's hot. And so God, you know, uh, prepared, pre- prepared a plant. a plant. That's right. That's so just, yes. here's this mm-hmm. other preparation moment. God prepares a plant, but that mm-hmm. plant doesn't stick around for long. So talk mm-hmm. about that, that moment that God was preparing for him. Well, you would, you would think if you spent three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, man, you would be all about God. You'd wear Jesus t-shirts and <laughs> WWJD necklaces Absolutely. and bracelets and You would and get shirts. a Trinity tattoo across your shoulder. <laughs> man, you wouldn't miss church or Sunday school or, or right. even deacons meetings. You would go to everything. <laughs> well, that's not what Jonah did. He was right. mad at God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, and, and, and part of that, I, I get, I think for a minute, boy, Jonah was judging God. I don't know that that was the smartest thing. <laughs> After he just saved you from a whale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you're talking. You're going up against. You're going up against the creator. So right. Good luck. Um, but it displeased. It displeased Jonah. Even after after that great um, uh, moment in the big fish, God really helping him to recover from his. He just. He just Part of the problem with Jonah is he never had the heart of God mm. in this whole story. Yeah. God calls him and he runs away. God puts him in the belly. It took him a long time for his heart to soften, but it didn't go all the way to God. And then he gets out. And the only reason he goes to Nineveh and does what he does is um, he still can taste that vomit. <laughs> he probably smells oh. like vomit. <laughs> Don't start gagging. And Gosh. then... <laughs> And then, you know, it's kind of like when a baby spits up on you, you keep smelling it, right? Oh, so, yeah, you um, really do. You really do. Yeah, but in, in that fourth chapter, I mean, he, uh, Jonah is so mad and God says, is it right for you to be angry? So again, it's another circumstance. 
because God, per- so, so, so Jonah was angry with God that he did what he did. Mm-hmm. So God prepared a plant and it came up overnight and it protected. He must have been had a bald head because he was hot. And so this plant shaded. They're kind him. of in like a, a really unforgivable area as well. Uh, so. Slightly. Yeah. It's kind of like what we would call the Death Valley. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just ugly hot. Uh-huh. And, uh, but then a worm, you know, uh, now Jonah was grateful for the plant, but a worm came and destroyed it. And yeah. immediately Jonah went back uh, so he never, he went back to his attitude. Mm-hmm. And so God basically says to him, you know, you have pity on a plant because he was angry at God for killing his plant. You know, some of us don't have green thumbs, I've been told. And, <laughs> um, but, but God says, what, you have pity on a plant, but not on Nineveh. And, and can I just say, if that's not an interesting analogy with what's going on in our world today. You know, um, we have, we're, we're so thankful for what we have, but we don't have pity on those who don't, we don't, yeah. we don't, we don't, we're more concerned about us than we are about others. So Jonah really illustrates because we're called to care. I mean, we're Christians. Mm-hmm. The God's God said, go ye therefore. And, and, uh, to all the nations, uh, I'm sorry, go ye therefore, make disciples in all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And remember, I'm with you always to the very end. That's our commission. That's right. But that's not what's happening today. Mm. Most people have never shared the gospel, m- uh, Christians. Most Christians have never taught a Bible study. We're, we're in a world today where most of them don't, not only do they not read the Bible, so somebody said, let's put it online. Let's put it on a phone. Let's they still don't read the Bible. So again, that's, uh, let that be a prophetic moment. That's, that's part of our challenge. If we're not careful, we as Christians can live a Jonah-esque Christianity mm. where God is always having to discipline and work with us and trying, you know, moving us forward and never really being, never having his heart. You know, you would think after being in the whale, he would have rejoiced to see yeah. Nineveh, you know, uh, to <clears throat> repent. But that's not mm-hmm. what he did. He, he was, he was a, a bitter guy. And I think that when we're in big fish moments, if we don't handle them well, then we could end up like a Jonah, just mm-hmm. being mad at God, being mad at everybody else, and there's no joy in anything. And I, I don't know that that's what the theologians would say about that book. I read it and go... We're much like our own. We're much like Jonah, and we allow big fish moments instead of letting God use that to grow us. Sometimes we let that destroy us. Mm. Well, and I, I think it's interesting that Jonah fulfilled the call on his life, yeah. but still found no joy in it. And Correct. so I so think some, yeah. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, he it, again, it goes back to what's your motive? I mean, Scripture talks about that uh, in that. We need to be a man of God and not hirelings. And not we, hirelings, we is that what you said? Hirelings, yeah. We, okay. we, we're not doing it just for a job. Mm-hmm. It's not just a vocation. And I, uh, I'm i always trying to encourage people to remember it's a calling. Mm-hmm. And calling is much different than going to church. Calling mm-hmm. is much different. It's You you know that. You know mm-hmm. that call on your life. It. How do you describe it? You know, How do you describe uh, how you knew Jeff was the right one to marry? Good, good luck. Try to de- try to describe that. Mm-hmm. Well, calling is the same thing. How do you describe that? Well, uh, obviously, uh, Jonah didn't have a heart for God, and God didn't have Jonah's heart. And what a tragedy! Mm-hmm. Uh, he had a call in his life. He was a prophet. You talk about one of the greatest gigs in the Bible is is, is to be, you know, a prophet of God, Mm because he speaks to you, and you hear him, and you say it. What a great opportunity. I don't know, though. I mean, those prophets, they ran from fire and uh, death. They were sodden, too. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I don't know about a great gig, but uh, it's certainly a relationship with God Mm -hmm. that many of us wish we had. We wish we had that open line of communication, which we do. Sure. We do, mm-hmm. right, through the Holy Spirit and through his, right. his word. Um, but, you know, like you look at Noah, 
and his relationship with God. And you say, I mean, he went up and had like, like a banquet with God, Mm. you know, and uh, like open talks and conversations. And, um, and so, yes, we, we wish that was there. Does everyone have a calling though? I mean, you said how to, I, well, I have a calling. You have a calling. Does everyone have a calling? Uh, if you are a Christian, your responsibility is to go, therefore, and make disciples. And remember, the Greek says, as you are going, mm-hmm. not when you're on mission, not when you're down feeding the poor. It's as you're going. Every, everybody has that opportunity. And uh, so, but even the Testament says, you know, beseech the Lord of the harvest because the laborers are few. And I mean, even the New Testament says that you talk to most pastors. I mean, COVID did a did a, a really injustice. One, the church bowed down to the government, which I still don't understand. But don't get me started on that one. Um, yeah. You know, uh, because it it a, a lot of churches closed their door. They couldn't survive that. But we all have a calling on our lives. And, um, you know, it's one thing to say I'm a Christian. And then it's another thing to say, I have a calling and I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And I'm going to mm-hmm. go where and I'm going to do whatever he asked me to do. And um, I mean, there was a time in my life where I saw so many women, men and women surrendering to the ministry. I don't see that anymore. And that is alarming to me. Mm-hmm. Um, now, my prayer is, is that my children have been raised in the Lord. And they, I believe my children know that they have a call. And, and God has put that in them, but it's their responsibility to do something with it hmm. because now they're adults. I can't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't do anything. And if I do too much, then I'm nagging and uh, it's better to be in my children's life and not in their business. But uh, so I just, you know, yeah, I believe everybody has a call yeah. um, and, and God's going to deal with us just like he did Jonah. Yeah. And I don't know about anybody else. Life is tough enough. I really don't want God to have to discipline me. But the Bible says he disciplines those he loves. So True. God must have really loved Jonah. And yeah. if there's somebody out there listening right now and they're in a big fish, I just want you to know that God has prepared this for a reason. Now you and he, you need to go to him. And if you just go to your friend Jesus and say, what's going on? Mm-hmm. What, what's what? what what does this mean? And then be quiet and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. It'll, it'll change. It'll change who we are as Christians. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I want to encourage us to be patient with that as well. I mean, I've, I, I hear, I hear you say that, you know, be quiet and listen. And, and I've, I've done that before Mm -hmm. and nothing. And I'm like, okay, I, I know this happens to people, you know, where they, they like sit silently and God speaks to them and nothing. And then, I mean, uh, this situation, I was uh, hiking across Spain mm-hmm. and uh, there's, it was a, a, a Camino, which uh, it was the Camino de Santiago. And a lot of people go on that when they're trying to make big decisions because mm. basically you are walking your way all the way across Spain. We only went a third of the way, but, uh, and you're just, there's a trail. You follow the trail to the next city. You spend the night, you keep walking. And we were there with a large group of people, but I decided to separate myself, um, and to walk alone on those days. It took three days, uh, you know, and, and so maybe that was because my heart needed to settle down. You know, it needed to, to, it, even though I was being quiet, I wasn't being still. And, um, and then finally God brought to mind a scripture from Philippians. There you go. And I was specifically asking for guidance. I said, here's my question, God, bring me anything, anything. And it was like, Ooh, that's a pretty bird. I mean, <laughs> like yeah. it was nothing mm-hmm. like it, it was, I was just enjoying his nature. That's it. Yeah. No huge revelation. And then finally on day three, he said to me, um, he brought to mind, uh, whatever is pure, whatever is noble, whatever is, mm-hmm. you know, think upon these things. That's Philippians four, eight. And so I looked that up in my Bible. I'm walking along a trail, reading a Bible. It was like this little, 
<laughs> little hand Bible. But, uh, and I said, okay, well, you brought me to Philippians. I'm going to go back to the be- beginning of Philippians and I'm going to start in the, you know, reading at the beginning. And that letter to the Philippians, um, the way that it read to me in that moment answered my question more clearly than I could have, mm. anyone else could have. Sure. And that was my answer right then and there. I'm now I'm walking down reading the Bible and crying. So this is, you know, it's just getting worse by the moment, <laughs> hoping I don't miss a sign that says, hey, take a right turn here. But, <clears throat> but I, it took three days. So I want to encourage listeners too, that if you hear sure. that and you're like, I've tried and nothing happens. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to say persist and keep list, keep giving yourself that time to listen, um, to be silent, but also still. Um, mm-hmm. And that can be really hard, you know, in, in our culture today, because there's everything needs your attention. You know, I'm a mom, yeah. I, I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but sure. if you can say, I'm going to take 20 minutes each night after Mm -hmm. everybody goes to bed and I'm going to go and I'm going to be, because I so desperately need an answer from God in this moment. You know, when my parents were going through their big fish moment, I went to God and I said, you know, my dad said, I don't know why. Actually, this was before mom was diagnosed. This was when dad had, um, been, had a job change. And the company was restructuring and they said, sorry, we no longer have room for you. And, uh, my dad was like, oh, and they're like, so here's your severance package. And they were not finding a position. We see now that that was God's providence, um, to get them to the right location where mom would get the treatment that she needed. And God is good. But in that moment, my dad said, God has never been so silent. Or maybe Mm. mom said that to me. God, we've never had God be so silent in giving us direction. And so I went to God and I was like, you know, Lord, why are you doing this to my parents? And, and why, you know, just give me direction. You know, what is it? Speak to me. (laughs) And God spoke to me in that moment. And he said, you don't need to know. (laughs) (laughs) That's legit. What I heard in that moment was, you don't need to know. It's none of your none business. Of your business. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's rude, but okay. So the yeah. answer isn't always what we want, you know? And in that right. moment, it was kind of like, it's, and now I realize he's like, you don't know how big of a picture I'm about to put into place. Oh, and you don't had need, no to, idea. <clears throat> we had no idea. And no, you don't need didn't. to know because mm-hmm. it's not your life. It's your parents' life. And, mm-hmm. you know, but. I just, I believe that if you will give God the space, he will speak to you. And it might be through scripture. It might Mm -hmm. be through, um, a podcast as you're, you know, you're sitting there and you're giving God time to speak. You're still in your body. You're being honest before God about the struggle, the big fish moment that you're going through. Mm -hmm. And then the next day you're listening to a podcast and it's like that, that's the answer. That's, Mm -hmm. that was God. That was. You know, and the person on podcast had no idea that they were being used by God in that moment or Correct. something like that, mm-hmm. you know? And Correct. so give God the time and give God the space and he will be honest. He may speak to you through your pastor or through a, a ministry leader in your life. He may speak to you through a friend. Um, but if you're looking and and your eyes are open to hearing God and his voice and the Holy Spirit in your life, he will be faithful and he will speak. Absolutely. He will. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He'll send you a, a, maybe he'll send you, you know, a plant to grow over your head mm-hmm. and protect you from the sun. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. well, Very good. thank you, dad, for, for welcome, being here girl. today. Oh, yes. my privilege <clears throat> always. Yes. So thank you for everything that you shared. And, mm-hmm. um, I hope, uh, listeners that you are encouraged, uh, no matter what you're going through, maybe you have a friend who's going through a big fish moment and you want to share this episode with them. Um, please do, because I think that that idea of the, of God being with us in the middle of our big fish moments is, um, a good one to, to hold on to. So thank you so much.